This might be one of the longest video projects I've ever done, but this is probably the most cringiest and probably the second video where I actually went a bit longer than my usual up video length. Um, first one was the assembling and unboxing this chair. So, and what a year this was before we get into the topic of today's video. I mean, it was exciting and sad. By exciting, I mean, at the start of the year, I was well on my way to documenting all these crazy locations and all these cool events and everything like that. I was like well on my way, on the way up. And it kind of works. Um, I surpassed 41 subscribers and had one of those videos from this main series popularized. Uh, the one with um, one of the cruise ships. And carved an Among Us themed pumpkin. But by sad, I mean a once in a generation pandemic hit us and most of those plans were shelved. Uh, let's not to worry, there's always summer of 2021 for those to reinstate those. Of course, that is um, vaccine outcome pending. But enough of the pandemic. Um, let's just go into today's video. I'll talk more about the summary of this year um, when I upload week 60 on New Year's Eve. I'll just leave it for then. But now let's move into today's video. Is this a remake of a of what I did previously? Yes, it is. Um, so I uploaded a video previously on this matter when I actually got to see whales and dolphins in their natural habitat. But honestly, looking back on it, I kind of uh, thought that the, the way I delivered the voiceover was like not as expected, which is what I had back then as a rising content creator, of course. And also the music selection, I think like that was a little bit odd. Like it was never heard anywhere else. So I'm literally remaking it for that reason. But the other reason is um, by the time this video was up, that original video would be hidden from view on my channel because I almost got copyright claimed for it. So that's the other reason why I'm remaking that video. And also I have more footage and I have a better mic and I have a better setup and um, better processors and... And the good thing about that is that um, I went ahead and licensed all the music that I'm going to be playing in this video. So there's no more further action to be done on that part. Um, And with that said, we will get into this video. I mean, I am like speechless right now. Like I, I have no words, but this is gonna be cringeworthy and I'm gonna warn you, it is cringeworthy. So I might pause here and there just to point out various things. But um, with that said, really, um, let's just get into, to, for real, I'll start the video now and um, I'll pause along the way just in case um, I want to go over like so many things that may have changed since then. All right, for real, we're starting. Three, two, one. <laughs> So this was back in 2016, and as you can see, up at 225 Broadway, you can see there was the NBC logo on there. About a couple years later, NBC would move to Santa Mesa, um, uh, into the Telemundo offices. So there's that, and this is Broadway and 4th Avenue, so we're looking towards Horton Plaza. Um, where my camera is zooming, that is towards the harbor front, and there is one of those rabbit buses. A lot has changed 
since then, and I will point those out as we continue further down. And let me turn this into a time lapse so we can get over to the harbor. So again, um, now we're passing through 225 Broadway. And then there's a couple other buildings that they renovated. So the one that we're passing up now on the right, that is now Tower 180. They completely redid it. And now it's an office building. It's just waiting, waiting tenants, but it probably won't be until after the pandemic when those tenants will be filled into the building. So now I'm going to be showing you another part is that we parked on a pier called Navy Pier because uh, behind me there was a little museum thingy, whatever. But I walked over the other side because you can see the Spirit of San Diego and that is a direct foreshadowing of what I did a few years later. And upload it back in March. And here comes the Adventure Hornblower. And I'm going to go ahead and explain a brief history of this in like a minute or less. So to start off, the thing was launched in 1994. And I have no idea where it was originally. But all I know is that it was acquired by Hornblower Cruises and Events and was used on the other side of the continent until like 2007. And then they brought it back, they brought it over here to San Diego. And then it uh, has been here ever since. But um, in March of 2016, the Adventure Hornblower crashed into this very same pier in the very same spot that I am now standing on. And about nine months later, um, the repairs were made and it was put back into service. And no further problems about the Adventure Hornblower have been made uh, since then. So... At least until uh, the pandemic. And you can see there's a whale on the hull. And there's one on each side. And that is to reflect its role as a whale watching boat. There's a platform on the front. And then there's a pla there's two uh, sun decks. Also to get views of the whales. And then there's also, it's also air conditioned and heated. As the case requires. Hello, welcome aboard. How we doing? Welcome, welcome aboard. Good morning. Going through that door, you see the stairs, you take this stop. So here we are going in. Um, as you can see, this is a big enclosed area. Again, it's heated or air conditioned as the case requires, and that's pretty much what allows for um, whale watching almost year round. They do take a break around uh, September and October. So the seasons are from December to April, and then again from June to September. So those are the two whale watching seasons. Again, the Adventure Hornblower is heated or air conditioned, so you can choose to be sheltered from the weather. It was actually raining a bit before the boat actually left. So, and actually we ended up moving forward into another compartment. Um, so, alright everybody, we do have an ear rape alert coming up in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright everybody, so now that we got that out of the way, um, we're pulling out, and as you can see, the parking lot is going to get pretty full here, and you're going to see why in like just a minute. So, there's like so many plans. They're planning to turn this into open space eventually. Now, opposite this pier is the Broadway Pier, and that's one of the cruise terminals. Um, and, then a par and then the next one from there is the B Street Pier, and that's the cruise terminal. Now, that is the museum in question, just on the other side of that, this pier that we're... And you'll see... Um, and with that said, we'll go ahead and get onto the bay. All right, so in just a few moments, so we're gonna start the music, and we're gonna start off with um, uh, Cadis and Casker with uh, Blue Shift. So um, again, um, there should be a pop up, including like right about now.
right, and then coming into view is uh, Harbor Island, which is right across from the San Diego airport. And let's continue with the music. And before we do, uh, I just want to say this, but um, we're continuing and we're getting closer to uh, Point Loma. And before you know it, we will be out in the ocean. So um, um, for real, let's continue with the music now. We have the submarine base station here in San Diego. As you see, uh, one submarine on the very first pier that we're passing right up to the right here for Los Angeles class submarines, which are 360 feet in length and hold a crew of 133. Uh, another ERIP warning in three, two, one. And we will now resume the music. full pause here um take a look at this this is like me four years ago and let me tell you this i was a junior in high school when i shot all this and and four years later here we are resume on so that we this camera doesn't go overboard okay, it's probably too late now because we're like on the continental shelf but here's the wake now well everybody um we have left the san diego bay and we're out in the ocean and we're on our way to see the whales so the boat turned north towards uh la jolla coves as um we would meet another whale watching excursion when we arrived within the whale zone. Um, it took about a couple hours to get out to the whale zone and then it takes another couple hours um, to get back. So in total it's a four hour excursion. Um, on board they do have um, snacks and refreshments and on the way back the um, museum whalers of the uh, Natural History Museum um, do a little presentation on um, all the wa the marine wildlife that the passengers saw while um, on the trip. And we'll play the next song now. Our next song is from Faint and Heather Solmer, and this song will be called Shockwave. So, um, 
and we almost got hit by a shockwave while on the way out, so I thought this would be most appropriate, and hope you enjoy it. And we're flying, so close to where we belong, now we're trying to go somewhere new. Till it shatters through the ocean I, I wanna make shockwaves I wanna make shockwaves with you Gonna move the ocean current Till the waves flood what's been burning I, I wanna make shockwaves I wanna make shockwaves with you And I know I'm only getting higher Till it feels like I can walk through All right, that's the other boat that we were meeting on that particular day, and we'll get back to the music now. But yeah, we have entered the whale zone. I don't know what's going on. So that boat that I just zoomed into right now, um, first it crossed our path, and then it started following us. And this is what makes it um, turn into more of an imposter mystery. So which boat was the imposter? Um, I'll tell you which one's the imposter towards the end of this video. So th this has turned into kind of a IRL case of Among Us. So hope you guys uh, play along with us as was, as this voyage continues. So what's going to happen now that we've entered the whale zone is that um, if a whale sp is spotted, the boat will slow down and then we'll get to see the whales and uh, they'll tell us like where exactly to look 
and then we'll get we we'll be able to snap some photos of the whales and possibly some dolphins too because um the activity of whale watching has expanded to include like all the other marine mammals that come up to the surface for some fresh air so with that said um I will have some photos and video clips from some of the best whales and dolphins that I caught on this trip, and uh, hopefully we'll see our first whale very, very soon. But, and, oh, actually, I think we managed to slow down a bit. So now that we're slowing down means that um, we're just slightly slowing down a bit and then decelerating because we spotted a whale. So um, let's get some footage of that. Now, in regards to the whale spotting, um, we just spotted our first whale, and that was a baleen whale. And I just zoomed in a bit too late because the whale tail was in sight. So, there's a bunch of techniques that the baleen whale uses, and that was reflected in the onboard narration, as well as the presentation that would be given to passengers on the return journey. The Natural History Museum whalers um, do the presentation on the return trip. Now, as far as the route of the whale watching excursion, uh, it kind of it depends. Um, for example, on one instance, it goes up towards Point Loma, although on occasion it does go further south towards Imperial Beach, but it rarely does that. So, um, but usually it comes up north to uh, uh, through Point Loma to the La Jolla Coves. Um, if that makes sense at all. And pause, this is the setting for where the presentation occurs. It occurs right here on this table. They put some artifacts here and then they present. And they rarely use a TV because they don't have like a keynote to do to accompany that. So um, it's just all like more kind of like a lecture just minus any sort of keynote. But I'm headed to the other side. And then I'm going to go up to the upper deck and see if we could catch anything um, while it's up there. So, like, have a more panoramic view or something. And we caught some dolphins. They're right alongside the boat right there. I think that was the craziest sighting that I've seen yet. And um, dolphin pods um, tend to always come up to these boats um, that are anchored here. And they also tend to come up to the sides of and race the ferries to uh, Catalina Island, let's say from like Long Beach and even Dana Point, and which I uploaded a video of that back in June and I visited there five years ago. So um, now we're repositioning ourselves so that um, we could uh, see another whale. And again, I caught some more pictures and I will present the photo slideshow um, during the return trip. So with that said, we're going to see if we can find a few more before um, we actually do start the return trip. So with that being said though, um, uh, let's continue. And just prior to leaving, um, another whale watching boat came to take over and that is called the Marietta and the Marietta is the other whale watching boat over here and there are two catamarans that are uh, of a higher speed that go from Long Beach um, but that's a different story but um, with that said I'm guessing it's time to reveal who the imposter was and we're about to reveal it in three two one and here it comes and here is what's been following us and stalking us this entire time and 
let me tell you, um, looks like everybody has to stand on that thing, and it's been converted for whale watching. It's basically a large platform on the main deck, enveloping a tiny cabin. There's a very tiny upper deck. Everybody has to stand. The only indoor area is just a cafe, and before I can go into any further detail about this, um, it leaves from Mission Bay. And it has very loud engines, and I strongly doubt if it'll even pass an emissions test today. I mean, it is super loud. And you're going to hear that in just a few minutes. Now, I managed to catch that thing um, coming in from another excursion a few years later, but I believe I have lost that photo of that. So, um, that makes me a bit sad. But here it is, um, leaving us behind. With the thrusters activating, it's time to begin the return trip. During the trip, I'll present another tiny video and then I will present all the photos I took on the trip. And then we'll conclude with uh, docking back in San Diego. I almost forgot to intro our final song of this video. And this is uh, from K391 and this song is called Earth. To get off their darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too That brings our journey to an end as we pull back into San Diego. It is now a little bit past noon. And um, as you can see, there are some new buildings that were going under construction at the time. And just like that, um, we'll get off the boat now. Yeah.
pull them back. Check your buttons in a second. But anyways, that is it for this week's video, and wow, we went over half an hour for the very first time. I hope everybody sticked around to the very end of this video, and uh, with that said, we'll go ahead and go over a term of the week. The term of the week is flood. It's an overflow of water that submerges land that is usually dry, and it usually occurs with rainstorms. And I brought this up because we're about to get hit by floods this winter, so thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next week.